Oh. Look, there's 10 of y'all, and Hogan said only less than 10. So one of you can come in with the camera, and we'll get this thing done. Come on. For your protection, not mine. And a little bit of mine. We'll put this around your face. So in here is my library display. And Laura was actually kind enough to donate some of the space so that we could get some detail stuff in. We don't know exactly what's going in here yet, but as you can see, we have Adam Hughes statues of Catwoman, Joker, Harley, Wonder Woman, Lady in the Tramp, which is hers, and I'll probably try to get my Song of the South stuff in there as well, as well as a Kotobukiya Darth Vader. And then we have a quarter scale Batman. This is officially my first quarter scale statue. My buddy and co-host of Nerd Rage Radio, Joe, AKA Uncle Dolphin, bought me this. It still has its Christmas ornament on it, but he bought me this because he says that every friend in his life gets one gift. This is my gift for life and it's to be spread out throughout the relatively 30 to 40 years that we should know each other. And in this detolf is going to go some more randoms, and in here we, so far, we have the Hot Toys Optimus Prime, and that's about it for right now because we don't know what else is going in there, but we have room for aggressive expansion. Here, we have my chess table. My dad bought me these chess pieces from Mexico. They were handmade, but don't worry, my kids have taken great care of them. The one takeaway from here is I do have a true romance coaster that I got from my wife for Christmas. And real quick, and I don't mean to flex on you too hard, but before we leave this room, let me show you what else we can do in here. You like that? Pimpin'. And now we'll check out the office where the magic is made and where I keep some stuff. So in here I keep a ton of stuff. I keep various 1-6 scale statues and I just have this open space here where I'm going to put another detail for more 1-6 statues and kind of pieces. As of right now I have Adam Hughes Batman Superman, Gentle Giant Darth Maul, as well as a Adam Hughes Wonder Woman and the Bondi Voltron. On the bookcases I have, across the tops of all of them, Adam Hughes, Women of the DC Universe, NECA, Planet of the Apes figures, I have my IDW stuff here for right now, uh, some X-Men stuff, Song of the South. Some various Stunicon stuff. I don't know how all that's gonna shake out yet. I'm collecting so many Stunicons, I'm not sure where to put them all, as well as my original Voltron set. I also have the modern Planet of the Apes figures along with a piece of Caesar that my friend Cody made for me. Uh, kind of a spillover Star Wars set, some DC stuff in a Darth Maul. And then over here, I have an AT-AT, -AT, my quarter scale Sideshow Star Wars stuff, and a Shuttle Tidarium from the Kenner line or Hasbro 3 and 3 quarter. Uh, and over here is where I have my computer. This is where I do all my editing for most of my videos. Not my podcast stuff, but my video stuff. A computer, a separate computer to do music while I'm doing my stuff, and then some odds and ends. Then I also have Kylo Ren's lightsaber here. And I have an art piece of Kylo Ren that my buddy Tyler the Collector did for me that I plan on eventually hanging over top. And that's pretty much the office El Total. Also, we have our famously boxed wine, which I get from the pantry here. Please forgive all of the mess. We're in quarantine times, so I want to make sure that nobody goes hungry. While you guys are running around buying all sorts of toilet paper, me, smart, Ritz. But now time for the sort of the real show. Come on in, we'll show you the basement. I still have my famous Impossible Toys Tetra Jeff shelf. Look, the truth is, is there haven't been that many better versions made in terms of alt mode. So I have them here. They get real dusty. At Skullfest, people tend to write their names in them in the dust, and that's that. I also have some sort of Minasaur gifts that have been given to me here, as well as this gift of Jaina Solo that Marilyn Phil gave me, who is a part of Nerd Rage Radio. Now, as we move down the staircase, you'll see some albums 
positive left a very big impression on me and my wife. Just albums that we are very fond of. If you're a Patreon subscriber, tune into the Bobby Boogie Bob. We go over music once a month, first day of the month on a weekday. These are some tickets here that we've attended, some big shows. Then we'll go on down. Over here we have some artwork. I almost got put out of public school for this project. Adam and I were working on this comic book some years ago and I did a little piece. I made myself one, made him one. This was given to me as a gift from Steve. This was given to me as a gift from Cody. And this is a letter that my grandmother wrote me to be donated to me once that she passed on to the next plane and we framed it and put it in the basement. Over here on this little billy is just my mask stuff, uh, Mobile Armor Strike Command. All of these shells make it up and then I have some extra kind of spawn stuff down at the bottom. I have to keep this stuff relatively off the ground because my baby's a big fan of it and has a tendency to lose the masks of which she's already lost two. But this is the price of having children sometimes, it comes with the territory. Of course we have the covert action teams up top as well as... <laughs> more lightsaber action hung around. I got this idea from JD, shout out to JD. He put me on to this idea of hanging them hung vertically. They take up far less space. I have a Halloween party every year. This was a Captain America shield worn by Claude during a Halloween party. And in here now is where I keep all my CDs. They give me a hard time for still keeping physical media, but what are you gonna do? They're all organized by genre and alphabetically. Here is where my Maja case is gonna go. I've ordered a Maja case, I'm just waiting for it all to come in. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a big to do to get one. So I've ordered one, it's gonna go here, it's gonna house my quarter scale collection, which is gonna be my grand finale. And that's that, when that's done, that's done. And it goes in right here in this section. I have this freestanding light shelf that I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet. Holding a few of some odds and ends that likewise I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with yet. But some SH Figuarts Mario Brothers stuff and my one of my most prized possessions, my uh, Brofest ticket. I can only use it once and I believe it expires this year. And with the Corona, it's gonna make it quite challenging in order to get it done, but I'm gonna do my best. Over top here I have this Star Wars mural. It's a long story and I've told it on various platforms, but I got it at Celebration 2019. I wasn't supposed to be able to get it. There was some beef between the artist and Amazon and Disney and blah, blah, blah. It is beautiful. It tells the whole story from the prequels through from episode one through episode nine and everywhere in between. I have it right now just held up with push pins, but I'm it's laminated. I'm going to eventually create a frame for it out of styrofoam because I can't find a frame place that'll actually frame it. I'm gonna create a frame out of styrofoam and put it around it so that it actually looks nice. Now over here, I also have some more odds and ends that I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do with yet, but I have my three and three quarter Joes, my three and three quarter Cobras, some He-Man villains, He-Man heroes, and then some random three and three quarter stuff. This is really my modern collection of misfit toys because I just don't know exactly what's going on with this stuff yet until I have everything kind of sorted. This is one of my new added things. One of the things I've learned along this journey is that I want my house to feel like a house. I want it to feel like a living space and then you can kind of take this stuff in. I don't want it to feel like a museum. So we've added these small skinny bestas. I have my turtles in here now. I'm not sure if that's gonna be their final resting place. And then I have my quarter scale NECA along the top. This is a set of six that we've secured in the back and I think it's done a good enough job. A couple little things along the top here to kind of keep interest and keep it moving. This eventually will be the end of the Star Wars display. It's not set up to be that quite yet, so it's kind of another island of misfit toys, but eventually this will mark the end of my Star Wars 112th display. Right here, I have this love seat. This love seat is getting out of here. It's going to be replaced with a bar. I was hoping to have it set up before that we did this video. Unfortunately, that couldn't get done, so we'll check in with that next time. However, as of right now, it's just a placeholder. Eventually, there'll be more shelves here, a bar. It'll all kind of fill out. Another vertical lightsaber. Now here is my mostly 112 scale collection. And this is split up between evil and good, for lack of a better term, 112 scale figures with the hot toys sitting in the middle. It's 
all rigged up with lights. We have dioders and all the detoffs and we have Norflies and all of the billies. I have instructional videos to both as to how to make that happen if you're interested in it. And the detoffs are sitting on top of Vestas, I believe. I'm not exactly sure on that, don't quote me. And then they're flanked by two light up shelves. This is in order to give a variety of furniture plus scale, as well as making sure it's illuminated and hopefully set the tone. This has been sort of the pilot for what we've been doing here in regard to Star Wars as a way of setting a template for what we're gonna do with the rest of the basement. And so far, so good. It has been a learning curve. All the dioramas have been done by me, my wife, Joe has helped out on a few, so on and so forth. The figures in them are a variant of Star Wars Black Series, SH Figuarts, Bondi Model Kits, Mayfex. There's a custom in there by JD, et cetera, et cetera. So it's really been a trial and error process of different types of furniture, different types of lighting, different types of figures in order to make something that I'm ultimately happy with. And as it turns out, I am happy with it. It's not done because like I said, I want my bar over here, but it is getting there. And as a result, it has been a huge learning process and curve for me in order to set the template for the rest of my displays. Over here, I've donated this extra space I had left over to some Star Wars artwork that I have. This is a R2-D2 that my daughter made for me for Father's Day one year. This is a portrait of Han Solo that Lee underscore Aikens underscore tattoos left for me, or gave to me as a gift rather. And then another one with the skull and the Death Star and the Empire kind of motif that my buddy Cody did for me. His Instagram is at Cody Art, K-O-D-E-A-R-T. Cody does a lot of art for me. I'm gonna run out of wall space. And then Right here I have these two coffee tables and they are terrariums, I guess, for lack of a better term. I have two dios in each, one of Jabba's Palace and one of the Cantina Bar in order to kind of display the three and three quarter figures as a homage to the three and three quarter line, as well as offering something different. People can put the drinks on it, but they, they put their feet up on it, which is cool. It just adds to the element of the living space with this stuff inside of your living space. Up here I have my sail barge with a couple skiffs on the side and it kind of sets off the whole thing. I like this idea, this Hasbro Pulse stuff really kind of being an accent piece. It's crazy that Hasbro is making accent pieces, but it, it does do its job. And then along the tops here I have some three and three quarter stuff on both sides to kind of flank it to sort of tie it all in. This is another set of six Bestas that I've used just to be a platform to kind of display more stuff. Inside, I'm kind of storing Hot Toys boxes at the moment. I'm getting another couch like this on this side so that it'll be kind of even, and then I have some more quarter scale NECA stuff with some uh, special stands that I bought, as well as Emphis Nest sitting within the middle. Over here is my last shelf, and like I said, this stuff kind of ties into the turtle stuff and everything else. I'm not exactly sure where everything is gonna shake out, but right now I have Mortal Kombat stuff in there, and I'm not sure what else, because I'm just not sure how it's gonna shake out, and I wanna have a little bit of flexibility in case something really jumps off and I need the extra space. So as of right now, this is what it's gonna be. I'm kind of happy with it. I am gonna light it eventually, but as of right now, it's just sort of a placeholder so that I know that the area is available. This little area, I'm just trying to kind of utilize the little bit of wall space to display stuff. My co-host of the Force Sensitive made this for me. This is a custom two tubes. Unfortunately, it literally is two tubes in a box. So that was a little frustrating to receive. Over here, I've got plenty of pieces, um, all of which I've, I've kind of kept in sealed boxes, sort of a display piece, but I got the R2KT, which was a charity piece for the 501st daughter that had cancer. Jana Solo, of course, a Gambit, because he's one of my favorite characters, and a portrait of my favorite dog ever, Alabama, drawn by Mr. Davis himself. I also have lightsabers up here. <laughs> Once again, just to try to take control of as much available space as possible. So if you've been watching my Cribs videos in the past, I've had a big Warhammer table here. 
Uh, my wife and I took a crowbar and a hammer to it and we got rid of that thing and I can't express how much it was the best decision we ever made. In its place, we've put this terrarium where we've made a diorama. We've had a little bit of a display space in order to show off the more highly painted pieces between the three armies that we had, Blood Angels, Orcs, and Tyranids. And now it sits in a case. It's good to see. It's part of the living space. You can take a look at it if you want. There's little Easter eggs throughout the diorama that you can appreciate it if you know what it's about. And you can kind of take it all in and appreciate it, whereas before it was sort of um, in the way and more of a focal point of a collection that's not really focused on this material. Now we enter kind of my Marvel area, which is a split up between Marvel Legends at a 112 scale and Hot Toys at a 16 scale. I plan on doing dioramas for all of these shelves. Right now I only have the X-Men Blue Team done. The Marvel Legends line has been something that I've been following for a while now, and I've seen it, you know, the, the ups and downs of it all, but I'm fairly happy with where it's going, and I'm fairly happy with where the collection has led to, so I'm ultimately looking forward to kind of completing dioramas for them all and having them look really official. Once again, they're on two billies plus a light up stand split up with the Detolf in the center, the Detolf displaying characters from the films from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All of them lit up with dioders and Norflies. Unfortunately, of these shelves, there's only one that's finished, and that is the Iron Man shelf. However, I have plans for all of them to be filled out, and I don't plan on going much further beyond that. That is unless the Marvel Cinematic Universe really kicks into high gear with the X-Men. Along the top I have Thanos kind of looking over them all as well as the Sinister Six and the Fantastic Four. So if you've been following anything throughout my Four Dummies experiences or some of my gripes on Shattered Cast or Nerd Rage in regards to displaying Transformers, I'm at a point where I'm finally getting a grip on it. And the answer has been four billies with diodes or dioramas with Norfly lighting systems. Split up between this glass case that I bought for a price that was far too high, but ultimately serves its purpose in housing some of the bigger pieces. And I eventually plan for the Unicron Hasbro figure to go up there on top to kind of overlook all of it. It has been a constant work in progress that I can't talk to you quite enough about. I find Transformers, especially in the masterpiece scale, to be extremely difficult to display in any way that makes them look presentable, respectable, or worth the price that they cost. It's been a learning curve it's been ups and downs but I'm finally at a point where I'm fairly happy with it. I can't show off some of the dioramas that I have going on right now because I have making ofs of those coming to patreon at the five dollar level however once they are up I will do overviews for the regular channel as to my kind of thought process behind them all but I the, the good news is for the first time in a very long time I am optimistic in regards to my Masterpiece Transformer collection, and it has taken me a long time to get there. So that's the good news, is I feel like I have finally cracked the code. And then lastly for this room, along the top on the floating shelves, the open floor plan, if you will, I have my G1 collection. Now, 99% of these are my actual G1s that I played with as a kid. There was a point in time where I tried to go back and buy some ones I was missing or buy some ones that I never had. But the truth is, is it never really spoke to me in the same manner that the ones that I actually played with in the sandbox, in the dirt, ever meant to me. So as a result, I just kept the ones that I have and I'm kind of happy with what I have. And in that regard, I'm cool with it. The nice thing is along the top here, you actually do get a chance to kind of take them in and see them and pay attention to them and give them a little bit of respect. And I have to give all credit of that to my wife because it was her idea to put them up top. Now bathrooms mainly 
for doing your business. However, they're not just for pooping anymore. So if you come in for a second, you'll see that I've even taken advantage of this space. For one, we have Lionel Richie up here. That's the standard. I'm still looking for a eight by 10 of Michael Jackson and ET to say goodbye. But in this house, Lionel Richie will never say goodbye because he only says, hello. I do have some of my artwork displayed in here. I'm not a big advocate of displaying your own artwork. However, if you are going to do so, my recommendation would be to do as I have done and that is put it in the bathroom. I also put a couple figures in here, some wet work stuff from McFarlane. I love the wet works comic and it never really took off. So I put those in here as well as some Witchblade and Darkness stuff in order to kind of just put some stuff in here because I had the floating shelves already set up. The good news is if you're ever here and happen to be doing your business, we've put in this thing here. So if you want, you can pull off a little bit of reading material, have a look at some Jim Lee artwork or Mark Silvestri, Michael Turner, rest in peace, who did actually sign this book for me when I met him in Philadelphia and he signed that book out to me. So he was a gentleman and we have this in here in case you want to take a look at it while you're doing your business. And lastly, the notorious, made famous via Robert Detoff, the tub. Now, it's not as terrible as they say. There are some paint stains and such. This is where I wash out a lot of my diorama brushes. My trash can is in here at the moment. I have some lacquer thinner in there, which is probably, I don't know if it's the best idea or not, but it, it's in there right now. It is capped up and secure, so don't worry about it. But this is the bathtub that's often joked about. This is what they break my balls about on for dummies. Now in here is the workroom. This is where we do diorama stuff. It's not the prettiest, it's a workshop. I have various paints and stuff set up here. As you can see, I haven't been too tidy. I keep tons of materials and stuff up here. This is where I do a lot of my airbrushing and I have all sorts of stuff. It's in general, it's in general disarray right now, but don't worry about it. I'll get it up and running to a point where it's comfortable. But right now we just finished the Dio of Crate for the Last Jedi shelf. After a couple Dios, we tend to kind of tidy it up and put it back in order. As of right now, it's in general disarray. The Nerd Rage Room is welcomed by Sub-Zero, which was a piece that my buddy Gort got for me, once again, co-host of Force Sensitive. And in here is where the Nerd Rage podcast go down. This is Chris's seat. He has this doily a lot of you have asked because of a Halloween party story, which you can listen to Nerd Rage for the full details of. This is where Joe sits. I sit here and then at any given time, various other people sit in here. When Laura and I do wine and cheese on Patreon, she sits here as well, as well as Bobby Blake Bob. It's also where Sit Down Saturday goes down. So we'll start and we'll go around the room. This is my Star Wars overflow area. Right now it's just holding Star Wars one six figures. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen with all of them. They're just filling up boxes until I have what I know I'm going to have in order to sort of distribute them throughout the house. Up top, I have some various books as well as the the McQuarrie art and a lightsaber and some little odds and ends. Over here is my Star Wars shelf. This is all Star Wars stuff. This is the picture that Carrie Fisher signed for me that I've talked about in many videos. So that's, that's that. Comics, they're all in chronological order. So they're not in alphabetical order or in size order. But if you want to start at the beginning and read to the end, you can and you can do it from my library, which is complete and in order, as well as some odds and ends throughout. Over here is sort of a Marvel overflow with some odds and I got Wolverine sitting here. This is a KO third party S Wolverine sitting here. And then my SH Figwarts, Street Fighter stuff, some video game stuff, comics, some Gundams, some random stuff. This is all the Marvel kind of spillover as well as some stuff that I've gotten for the Skullface cause. Over here we have, once again, a lot of Marvel stuff. This is the Marvel area. So we have a Carnage statue that I was gifted by a friend of mine. We have a Venom Play Arts Kai, and we have the Moss Toys box art that I did that I will ever, ever keep here as sort of a testament to my little country Contribution, as well as some odds and ends and some more Star Wars stuff. And then over here we have the main Marvel shelf with, once again, Play Arts Kai across top. We have some big sort of events here, SH Figuarts, movie verse stuff here, odds and ends throughout. And then we get into some image stuff down at the bottom, including 
the Saga figures that JD and Chan gifted me with, and I appreciate that. This is the sort of middle breakup. This right here is a darkness statue that Joe has kind of permanently lent to me, I think. I'm not sure what the rules are regarding it, but he's given it to me. If at any point he ever wants it back, he's welcome to take it. But he, I have the Magdalena here and the Witchblade here, so he's kind of put this darkness here to kind of keep it all together. But if, if he ever wants it back, he's welcome to take it. And I don't think those are my words. I think they're his words. And up at the top here, we have some skull face stuff that has been gifted to me. This was a Lego set that father and son did, a custom skull face Sith by my buddy Mr. Fong, as well as Chris Bishop's El Now custom Star Wars figure that he did for me with box and so forth. Really great stuff, means a lot to me, and sits up at the top in the middle as a result. This shelf here is my Transformers representation for this room. It's mainly IDW stuff with the Dinobots and Robot mode, and then some odds and ends along the way. But Transformers is a huge part of my collection, it's a huge part of my life, so it's to have a segment of Transformers to kind of occupy this space. Now from here on out is my DC area. I'm a huge DC fan. My kids are all named after Star Wars characters and DC characters. I have Play Arts Kai stuff along the top shelf. I have statues from DC collectibles along the very top of the bookcases. I have SH Figuarts, Mayfex movie stuff. I have Watchmen stuff. I have all sorts of Play Arts stuff throughout the years, as well as the Nolanverse stuff, all sorts of comics. It's a library of DC. I celebrate DC. I love DC. It's been a huge part of my life and a huge part of my adult comic book collecting experience, as well as some of their more adult themed books along the bottom with their Vertigo titles, so on and so forth. Then we get to this Detolf area, which is DC Detolfs. Very sparse at the moment, but as of right now, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna allocate it all. And then at the top, I have a statue of the Motor City, Selena Kyle, Catwoman, as well as a one-fifth statue of Evil Lynn, which, as most of you know, played a big part in my, my childhood. And then behind that is that, D that Women of the DC's Universe that I spoke about in a recent sit-down Saturday so that you guys can know about that as well. And then my last set of Detolfs are all the DC stuff. Once again, I don't know exactly how it's all going to shake out in terms of distribution, but we have Nolanverse stuff, we have DC Universe stuff. For the most part, it's just a variant of different movie stuff and it's all DC related. And then at the top, we have the quarter scale TMNT Ninja Turtle set, which is one of my favorite sets, period. It looks great up there. People often comment on it like it's a showstopper of sorts. Now this is almost my Robert Detolf shelf. A lot of this stuff is stuff that Robert Detolf has bought me that I don't want and don't care for, but it's Star Wars related, so I keep it. We have this Darth Vader, the top comes off. Yeah, it's a cookie jar, I guess. Then some of the stuff, like Tyler F has contributed to some of this stuff. Like a lot of this stuff is again, I think Randy gave me this. Like a lot of this stuff is kind of odds and ends Star Wars stuff that people have gifted me over the years. And because I love Star Wars and because I love these people, I've kind of kept it in one singular space. So a lot of this stuff was given to me as a gift. Back here is where all the reviews are done. I have my brushes out because I've been dusting, but all the reviews are done here, and then this is kind of my setup space. Music is often played. My wife got me this post thing as well that I can play, so music is often part of what's going on in here. I have this little fridge here. Let's take a look at what's inside it. Some Diet Mountain Dews, some beer, some vitamin water, some root beer. This is just a sign of all the people from Nerd Rage that come over, put their drinks in here, and then sort of use them as they want them, which they're more than welcome to do so. And this drawer is where, like, well, this set of drawers rather is where all my tools are. So spudgers, screwdrivers, etc., etc., for the sake of reviewing, as well as the world's famous Tiger Track. He's in there as well in the top shelf. Should I ever need him? This board here is where I keep notes and stuff for when I'm doing a review. I'll keep certain notes as to what I want to mention, make sure I don't forget. On the side here is people that have come to Skullfest or different parties at my house and kind of left their mark and now I can't erase it so I'm limited in the amount of space I had to write, but I guess it's ultimately worth it. And then along the top here, I have all of the 40th anniversary New Hope Black Series figures carded kind of on display up here. I don't know what they did, but it was perfect because it fits those cards just about perfectly. Up here is some art that has been contributed to me. This is from Mr. Davis, this is from Mr. Fong, and that's from Mr. Jisk. Various Skullface artwork that I've got framed and hung over to sort of appreciate what they've done, and I'm very grateful. Now, we're getting ready to go to a room that we've never officially unveiled, so come with me. This is the last room that we had to finish, and it is now officially finished. This is the movie room. Let's have a look. 
That down there is a huge oversized pillow for the room that my wife insisted that we get because she doesn't understand the amount of space of the piece of furniture it actually takes up in a room logistically and she thought that it'd be great for the space so we have that here now which definitely prevents the amount of fun that you can have on the floor. Up here we have two different layers. My wife and I usually sit here when we watch movies and then the kids sit back here on these three. Also they kind of serve as skull fest beds when we have people over. And then at the back here we have a DVD section of physical hard copy DVDs that if the internet should ever go down, which isn't so much a laughing matter now anymore, is it? I'll be the one who's laughing. The room is surrounded by posters of our favorite films. It's not completely done yet, which is a bummer and somehow it keeps getting lost in the soul because we just keep forgetting about it, but we have True Romance, we have the Apes movies, we have Empire Strikes Back, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and Transformers the movie. As well as, of course, the Nolan vs. Batman. I'm not a huge gamer, but we do have some gaming system stuff along with some games. This is where the Blu-rays are kept in these cabinets here. Just the important stuff. Screen TV, I don't know what the size is. It's big enough, I guess. And then we have the three and three quarters on these shelves. It used to have CDs on the sides and it does look nice. It was a nice answer to that problem of solving in regards to the three and three quarter collection. So this is that in a nutshell. That's how everything is kind of sorted out. This is the movie room as we have it now. But there is one more small room I need to show you. So if you listen to Nerd Rage, you'll know that we often talk about Joe's house. Joe has his own little house inside of my house where Uncle Dolphin can take a break or take a sleep or take a nap, whatever he shall need. And we keep it in here. And oh, he's in there right now. You need to give him stuff down before he gets upset. Just throw him in there. It's okay. He's okay, he's been satisfied. So we just lock that back up so that he doesn't get out and he's safe and secure. All right guys, thanks for checking out the crib. It has taken some evolution. We have gotten new rooms finished and such. I know I'm overdue for one, so thanks for checking it out. And look, I don't have all the answers, but I do know that it's a very dynamic thing. It takes different things. <coughs> Are you kidding? Wrap that bandana around your head a little tighter and get the f out of my house right now, immediately. Go, 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 go.